so nice to have you on the banjo and welcome everybody to the CDSS Common Time. It's so good to see so many folks jumping in. Hello to lots of faces that I know and some faces that I don't know. It's great to have you all here. Thanks for joining. And um, so for anyone who is new to the idea of what the Daily Antidote is, uh, we're going to kind of do this Daily Antidote style. So when we open the Daily Antidote, what we do is we say hello to people. And it was actually a big part of the program is the idea that we're being seen, which was during the pandemic's uh, time, kind of a thing that we didn't know we were. Um, for those of us who were fully isolated, we weren't getting a lot of hellos. We weren't hearing our name. And uh, so we started out the Daily Antidote by saying hello and uh, noticing you and uh, having a moment where we looked each other in the eye. So I'm gonna um, start by saying a hello to everybody out there who's watching this after the fact on YouTube. Can all of you guys in the room help me wave to the YouTube folks? Thanks for joining and uh, we hope you enjoy the ride. And I'm gonna hello Arne, who is coming in from California. Arne is one of the regular co-hosts in the Daily Antidote, hosting every Tuesday. And uh, she is uh, an amazing musician, uh, former Sweet Honey in the Rock, and we're going to be singing and, and chatting with Arne today. I want to hello Hubby Jenkins, um, also one of our regular hosts in the Daily Antidote of Song. Uh, he comes in on a lot of Thursdays, but a lot of other days too. Hubby, I'm glad to have you. Coming in from the Bronx, I think I have that right. And uh, super glad to have you. Is that right, Bronx? Do I have that right? Brooklyn. Queens. <laughs> Queens, ah, thank you for coming in from Queens, New York. And Ise Barnwell, nice to have you with us today. Also, former Sweet Honey. Another Hawaii. Queens person. Yeah, and she's, all right, there you go. And she's uh, currently coming in from Washington, DC. I'm gonna say hello to Joanna Reiner Wilkinson, who is uh, the CDSS representative in the room today. Joanna, thanks for inviting us to do this. We're excited yes. to be here. At also Common from Time. Queens, by the way. Oh my goodness. Gosh. Okay. I'm the only one in the top row. <laughs> Hello to Arlene coming in from California, regular Daily Antidote folk. And uh, hi to Jane. Nice to have you with us today. Uh, maybe coming in from New Hampshire, if I have the right, Jane. And hello to, I do. Hi, Susan in Seattle. Nice to see you. Hey, Cricket, coming in from Maryland. Great to see you. Deborah in Kentucky. Hello. Hello, Mommy, coming in from New Jersey. I'm so sad. glad you have your camera on today. Hi to Kevin in New Hampshire. Great to see you. And I see Anna and Chris coming in from Pinewoods Camp. Hello and hello. So just for folks who haven't been to the Daily before, we got a lot of different people who say hello to people. I'm actually going to shift some helloing over to the magical Arne so you can get a little taste of how she does it. All right. I'm so glad to see Cliff in Vermont. So glad to see Luda in Victoria. Where's my love, Luda? I need the love. There we go. So glad to see Diane. Hey, so glad to see Bob. Where's the bears? I'm happy, happy to see Sheila. Okay, y'all moving too fast. Mm -mm. I'm so glad to see Kathy in upstate New York. And Harriet Dart, I see you there. And my friend Bonnie with the Ukrainian flowers behind her. I'm going to shift this now over to Hubby. Okay, Hubby, Hubby's a New Yorker, so Hubby takes a deep breath, lets it out, and he goes... How you doing, Willard and Lama in Vermont? How you doing, Brooke Friendly in Ashland, in Ashland, Oregon? What's going on, Sheila in Florida? You got a double one to say. How you doing, Margaret in New York? Hey, what's going on, Martha in Oregon? Go oh, Cricket, Deborah. I think we got you people already, but I'll keep it moving on. Dad, I'll come down the line and say hi to Carol Jane, Connecticut. What's going on, Sandy in North Carolina? Kathy in Virginia? James? Isabel? Oh, what's going on, Sarah? Good to see you. What's going on, Sarah? What's going on, James? And I think I did. Everybody. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Thank you so much, Hubby. That was great. And uh, I want to say also just a couple quick notes since we're here. Um, so uh, Carol in Connecticut and Hubby actually met in person. Um, that's a connection that happened through the Daily Antidote. So I love that she's here. We've also got folks in the room from Puerto Rico. Hi, Diane. And uh, from Idaho, that's Bonnie. And uh, folks also coming in from, I see North Carolina just came in the room and Virginia. So hi to Kathy and also to, let's see who that was, Sandy. And uh, thanks, gang, so much. Celia, nice to see all of you here. Let's all take a deep breath. Because even if I'm not from Queens, I'm from New Jersey. So I know how to do that too, hubby, that thing where you don't take any breaths. Yeah, I got that. Um, thanks, everybody, so much for being here. So um, what we're going to do really quickly, for those of you who have not ever been to the Daily, um, we're going to do a little run through, um, tell you a little bit about it. Um, so in addition to hellos, there's a lot of traditions we have in the Daily. And we've done a lot of things in the Daily. So I'm going to put up a little slideshow. Can everybody see that? 
Awesome. So just very quickly, uh, we like to say uh, that we change, we're changing the world one song at a time. We've had over 250 song leaders from all around the world. I do like to say that we have not yet had anyone from Antarctica. So if there's anybody who knows anybody in Antarctica that sings, you should let us know. Uh, every day at noon Eastern, absolutely free. Uh, please join anytime. We sing on Facebook Live as well as live in the Zoom room. Um, and so here we are, that's Hubby who is hosting Brendan Taft. This is just a typical day in the daily. And I think we have also Arne. Oh, my thing is moving very slowly. I hope you guys are seeing. There's Arne hosting Guy Davis. Um, and uh, that was just another typical day in the daily. So let's see what we got here. All right, so we started in the pandemic. So that's April of 2020. And uh, it was weird times, everybody knows that. And we thought we were coming together to sing just for a few weeks while we were all just gonna be in lockdown for a few weeks. And uh, as uh, some folks in this room know, we just started our third year of being, um, and the times stayed pretty weird. Um, but one of the things that happened in terms of building a community is that we put up a little program for people to sing because we thought people might miss singing. And we ended up doing so much more. We could never have env envisioned that we would be still together and singing through so many things. So there was the, the pandemic that brought us together and the masking and the vaccinating. And we went through a voting cycle and we went through an inauguration and we went through an insurrection and we went through a Black Lives Matter um, awareness and George Floyd's murder and so many things that occurred while we were getting together every day in this room and singing. And it really um, created community in a way by itself, right? We were a group of people who had never actually met we came together to sing, but what we were doing is we were um, going through major events together and that tied us together in a lot of ways, Very a lot of deep emotional stuff. Our discussions in the room got very, very deep a lot of the times talking about whatever it was in the news that day or whatever was going on in the world um, that had us either sad or feeling hopeful. Um, so um, one of the projects that we did from in the room because we started to think maybe we could um, try to help um, uh, do something, do something in a world that felt like it needed a lot of work. And so we were sitting at home and locked in our homes. And what could we do? One of the things we came up with to do was we wrote cards um, it, that when the Washington Post wrote their article, their article says 1700 handwritten cards. Uh, by the time we were done, we did 2200 cards to Howard University Hospital healthcare workers. Uh, that was one card for every worker in uh, Howard University Hospital. And uh, which actually uh, Issei Barnwell uh, has a big affiliation with Howard University. Um, and in fact, uh, the health uh, division of Howard, I think she has a degree in, uh, in public health from Howard. So um, anyway, we, we really, we, we came together, wrote these cards because it was something we could do while we were home. And um, that was an action that built community in our room. Uh, we celebrated birthdays. You can see uh, there's Peter Amidon holding a card to um, Peggy Seeger. Uh, there's Jim Harkless holding a card made by Susan G. Uh, we had a birthday for Kevin. Uh, Jim, I think, was celebrating his 90th. Um, there's Issei Barnwell celebrating her 75th birthday in our room. And uh, Ella Jenkins showed up for Issei Barnwell's 75th and uh, got to chat with Issei a little bit. It was pretty magical. And uh, this is a project that Elise Witt did. Um, so she created two videos and um, they were uh, one, a traditional song, Jenny Jenkins, and one, a song that she wrote, and she did a call for um, art from people in the Daily Antidote and way beyond. Art came in from all around the world, and these two videos are available online, and they showcase a lot of artwork um, to match the song. You can see, for those of you who know Sam Bartlett, a uh, big connection to CDSS and to Pinewoods, uh, the, the artwork on the Ready or Not cover right there is uh, Sam Bartlett's art. This is actually um, a piece from the quilt. And uh, you'll hear a lot more about the quilt later. I say the capital, the capital quilt. Um, so that square there on the left of the quilt is a square of pine woods. And the reason, so the quilt is something that represents the whole of the daily antidote, all of the two years. And uh, we're gonna show that later, but I wanted to just point out that pine woods um, appeared on the quilt as did CDSS because um, 
we broadcast the Daily Antidote live from Pinewoods on several occasions. We had weeks where we were partnering with Pinewoods and uh, showcasing artists that sing at Pinewoods, even during some of the weeks when Pinewoods was open. We did partner weeks with CDSS and had their virtual kaleidoscope camp and other weeks where we showcased artists who sing at different CDSS events. And so it was a really great way. You can see there in this slide, we were building fairy houses and uh, dressing in costumes. Uh, that is L.V. Miller and family right there over in Ireland, uh, L.V. being someone who is often affiliated with a lot of the CDSS projects. Um, this is a um, song leading uh, uh, sort of, uh, yeah, a thing that uh, Maura Smiley did showcasing different song traditions that um, happened during the pandemic. Innovative song leading is what she had um, called it. And so she actually did a little highlight on the daily in her, um, her project. And uh, NPR here and now also did a little blip on the daily antidote of song, thanks to Deborah Denenfeld, who's here. Um, we got a little a little nod there, something that um, brought people together during the pandemic and uh, sustained them. So as with any community, there are the ups and the downs, right? So we actually, uh, over the two years we've been together, we lost people and some of those people are people lots of folks in this room know. So uh, Larry Gordon, who uh, was the um, leader, executive director of Village Harmony, uh, Johnny Harper over there with the guitar sang with us. Uh, once, but joined us in the room a multitude of times, just used to come every day to sing. And uh, Tony Barrent, who also sang with us once, but also used to come in and sing, and uh, many others. Um, and it's, you know, there's those sad moments, those real life moments that happen in any community. But there's also these joyous moments that happen in any community. And what we have here is uh, real meetings of people who met through this room. No one knew each other before and then start to come together as things start to open up. So you can see Kathy B, our host that I mentioned earlier over there on the right. Um, and that's when she met me for the first time. There's Jim Harkless, uh, who uh, lives here in DC and Kathy Mayer, who lives in Virginia. I think Kathy's here today. Deborah Denenfeld meeting um, Kathy B. There's my son, Nico, meeting the Amadons. Uh, there is me meeting Darla, the Connecticut therapy dog. Uh, Susan in Ohio, the maker of the quilt, meeting Deborah in Kentucky. Uh, hubby and Carol from Connecticut meeting, which I mentioned before. And then over on the top left, that's Issa Barnwell in the front. It's is in my living room um, meeting a family from Michigan, uh, a gentleman from Totnes, England, uh, Jim from DC and uh, Busy Graham from Carpe Diem Arts and Carpe Diem Arts staff. So it's like this coming together. It's the strangest thing in the world that something like this could happen, right? We come together in the pandemic virtually and make friendships that actually um, happen in real life. So, um, all right, my last two slides don't seem to be working. So I'm gonna, oh yeah, no, they're still working. Okay. This um, is some of the things we sang about. So we had a flyer for a lot of the weeks and we sang about um, Latino Heritage Week. We sang about uh, harmony singing. We sang about women's history. We sang, there's the CDSS uh, brochure. We had a peace week. We sang, uh, Sweet Honey in the Rock did a whole week with us with different Sweet Honey singers coming in every single day. Um, we sang a lot for racial justice, uh, labor heritage, and uh, Black Lives Matter week, which was actually a commissioning project of composers. Um, we sang for immigration and so many other things. Uh, so as you can see, we did a lot of singing. All right, this is a, a slide that shows a lot of our hosts. So there's Kathy Bullock, Hubby, and Arne at the top, our regular hosts, and then a whole lot of other people who hosted with us um, and sang with us, Elise Witt, Reggie Harris. Oh, look, there's Anna Alter. Uh, who's actually the Daily Antidote assistant um, and uh, and a very cute little puppy. Um, and uh, there is Andy Davis and Robin and his daughter, Emma. They sang with us and Andy also hosts with us. Emma's Revolution, Steve Winnick from Library of Congress um, and lots of other folks. You can see LV again down there on the right. Um, these are folks who've sung with us and hosted with us. Um, and it's been magical and amazing. And we've been so lucky. And um, this is another bunch of folks. You can see Katie Martucci, the Vox Hunters, Natty, um, who's uh, on the or was on the PCI board up until recently. Um, there's uh, Peter uh, and Annie over on the left, the um, force behind the Rise Up singing book. And uh, there's Katie German. She sang with us, uh, Katie German from CDSS um, and uh, Alex Cumming, who I think he does English week. And uh, he is such a crazy guy. And we get him in the room a lot singing and hosting and, um, and spending time with him. Lots of partners. CDSS, of course, has been a big force in this. Pinewoods has been a big force in this. 
um, Alternate Roots, Sweet Honey in the Rock, Washington Revels, Labor Heritage Foundation, and each of these partners, the Library of Congress, American Folklife Center, Ubuntu Choirs, Village Harmony, each one of them brought with them uh, so much um, of their own character and brought so many layers to our, um, our, our program. So the last slide was um, everybody doing the hearts because it is one of the things that we do is we send each other a lot of love and um, bring a lot of ourselves into our community. But what we really do is we sing. That's what started the whole thing. And so on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Arne Batson. Um, in the tradition of the Daily Antidote, we don't babble this long before we sing. So I'm going to turn it over to Arne. Now that you know what we're all about, Arne, can you show us how we do the singing part? Sure, but I've first got to say congratulations, Joe. That's just absolutely incredible. Incredible. Um, you This came through you, and we all are the beneficiaries of it, so we're very grateful. Okay, um, we're going to sing a song that a lot of us know, Ella's Song, written by Dr. Bernice Johnson Regan, one of my teachers. I've got another teacher of mine here, Dr. Isai Maria Barnwell. Uh, the song is Ella's song, and your part is we who. Uh oh, let me make sure I got the right key. We who. Okay, I, I I pitched it higher. I pitched it higher, Doctor B. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. That's your part. Let me give it to you again. One. Uh uh. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, uh. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. All right. So I'm going to ask Joanna if she would please. She already did it. Pop the lyrics in the chat so everybody can follow where you see the caps. We who believe in freedom. That is your part. That's the chorus. Let's sing the song. Everybody take a breath. Mm, breathing in joy, breathing out gratitude for this day and for this way of expression. Here we go. And Joe, let me know if you can hear the track. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Mm, mm, mm. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes we who believe in freedom cannot rest we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes until the killing of black men black mother son is as important as the killing of white men white mother sons we who believe in we who believe in freedom cannot rest y'all got your part i see deborah's got hers who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes that which touches me most is that I have a chance to work with people passing on to others that which was passed on to me oh we who believe in freedom cannot rest no 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 we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes to me young people come first they have the courage where we fail and if i could just shed some light as they carry us through the gale oh we who believe in freedom cannot rest Put your hands together now, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Yeah, the older I get, the better I know that the secret of my going on 
is when the reins are in the hands of the young who dare to run on against the storm. Yes, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. No, 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 never rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Not needing to clutch for power, not needing all the light just to shine on me. I need to be one in the number as we stand against tyranny. Let me hear ya, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. Justice does not rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. I'm a woman who speaks in a voice and I must be heard. At times I can be quite difficult cause I'll bow to no, no, no man's word. Oh, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. Uh, uh, uh. No, 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 we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Oh, struggling myself don't mean a whole lot. I've come to realize that teaching of us to stand up and fight is the only way our struggle survives. Oh, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. No, 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 we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Sing that again. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. No, 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 no. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Oh, one more time, y'all. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom. If you believe in freedom, put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up. We cannot. We can never rest. Woo! Dr. Johnson Regan. Arne Batson, thank you so much. Thank you. And Dr. Barnwell was present on the very first recording of that song by Sweet Honey and the Rock. I'm telling the truth. And I, Dr. Boy, and I talked to Big. That was hot. That was hot. So yep. yeah, uh, that has been a really amazing song um, that we've sung in the room more than once, actually. And it sort of brings us into a nice segue about talking about the fact that in May of 2020, when George Floyd was murdered, um, there was a real, uh, I would say, new level of awakening of awareness about white supremacy, about racial injustice. And um, in terms of building community, that notion that we were all together through a tough journey, that we all learned together, that we all became more aware together, that we then thought of things to do, you know, to try to um, help make change. Like that was something that I think really tightened this community. I mean, it was it was a, a challenging time anyway. We were all home, and it was weird. And right, and it, it was very weird. And um, you know, there were Breonna Taylor act, actually happened before George Floyd. And so I was working with my choir. We took everything from being in person, like most folks did. We went online and somehow we figured out how to stay in contact, how to remain in community, how to keep singing together. Um, when the George Floyd murder happened, um, I didn't watch it. I refused to watch it. Uh, but I knew everything. I knew, you know, all the details. And I, of course, immediately went to 
like what is the music that people are playing in response to this and the song that i heard the most was um sam cook's change is gonna come i was born by the river i know a change is gonna come but i've just felt like you know as much as i love sam cook that was like the 1960s and here we are in 2020 and this same thing is still happening. And so um, I responded by writing a song, The Time Is Now, and got my choir involved. We actually did a video, one of those virtual choir videos. We were just figuring it out. Like, how do you do it? How do you put the pieces together? And uh, it turned out to be an incredible community builder, uh, not just within the choir. We were looking for singers, um, who were all around the country who wanted to be a part of something. And then we had a photographer friend who was at a Black Lives Matter rally in downtown Los Angeles. And so he got all this great, right, on the spot footage of, you know, people out protesting with the mask on. That was the first time we had seen that. And so all of that's captured in this video, which I'll put a link up. But I, I want to close the, uh, well, I think I want I might want to close this with the time is now. Uh, but it was just, you know, the time is now. Change has got to happen right now, right now. And so we had this huge swell of momentum at the time. And um, I was very, I was very humbled and, and, and just, you know, propelled to do more to do more because you know normally I would have been out on the street but I was home so for those who were out on the street with their mask we were able to yeah. it was it was it's fantastic it, it was a really it was an amazing time I think also like you know because we were so stuck on our screens a lot of people were watching it right and it was like a centerpiece and you were watching it continue and um one of the things that we did in here was we took for a week, we took in uh, what was what they were then saying was eight minutes and 46 seconds, the knee on the neck. And we took an eight minute and 46 second silence. Uh, day, yeah, it was so intensely powerful, right? Like the, the notion that we were all being quiet together, right? From all these different locations, um, we're together and we're not together. And we're, you know, we're each in our own space, but we're all together in this one space. And it was so powerful and I feel like it was a real, um, it was, a, you know, the way that the music came together with the movement, it's, I'm being reminded now by what it was John Lewis, I think, right, who said a music without, a movement without music is like a bird without wings, right? Like there was so much, we talked so much about that in this room, like how are we singing when there's all this big stuff going on? And then of course, how could we not be singing when there's all this big stuff going on, right? And is the singing like selfish or frivolous? No, the singing is actually to bolster us, right? The singing is actually to make us stronger so that we can go forth and do whatever it is we need to do on whatever day it is. And so, yeah, Arne and also Issei, um, hubby, you too. Like I know we've talked a lot in this room, the, the four of us together about music and building community, music and unifying community, music and making strength. Can you guys come in a little bit about that? You know, one thing that um, has always impressed me, <clears throat> and I think most of us from the beginning have come from societies where things weren't written down. And so singing was one way of documenting things that happened from day to day or from minute to minute. And so during the 60s, when the civil rights movement began to really flourish, um, we put all of the things that were going on into the songs that we were singing. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Um, uh, ain't going to jail, you know, all of those kinds of things. And so uh, it was a way of documenting uh, without having to go to pen and paper specifically uh, what was happening from day to day, from minute to minute, from month to month, uh, from city to city, everything that was going on during that period of time. That's, yeah, totally amazing. So music as a force of documenting, music as a force of collecting our collective thoughts and our collective experiences. Um, and uh, Issei, talk just for a minute and about- pulling everybody together. Thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I need to say, Dr. B is the queen of pulling people together. Uh, there is a community singing um, network 
that I first saw through Dr. Barnwell back in, you know, back in the 80s. And now you've got so many community choirs coming through using the model that Dr. Barnwell established. Um, I just have to keep saying thank you because, you know, I attended Dr. B, but I, I kind of sure, still wasn't sure what you was doing. I, I knew you were singing, but I still couldn't figure out like, what is going on here? And now I'm right all up in the midst of it. And, um, you know, saying your name, everybody knows you. Everybody knows and loves you. Uh, so I can just, again, take this moment to just thank you for bringing that singing as community building awareness to me and so many others. Well, thank you. And thank you for taking the risks uh, that one takes when one says, okay, I think I can do this. I'm gonna teach a song. And then you have to sort of say, oh my God, everybody's singing the melody. Okay, what? It's, do we have a bass in the room? <laughs> do we have an alto in the room? Do we have a tenor in the room? Uh, okay. <laughs> and you have to decide, okay, at some point I might have to be the model of each one of those parts. And sometimes you make it up and then the next time around you forgot what you did and you know, the whole nine yards but it, it begins to come together. It comes together. And I'm grateful for all of those of you who picked up on some of the things that I was doing and, and have carried them forward. I appreciate that. So thank you, Dr. B, because you've been a really amazing force in our um, Daily Antidote room. And uh, before I ask you to sing, um, I just want to say one quick thing, because we just were sort of touching on this too. The idea of um, of coming together and singing songs that are different and for different reasons. And like, so in the Daily Antidote, um, with 250 song leaders who we've sung with, um, coming from all around the world, we've sung, you know, with someone in India, and we've sung with someone in Sicily, and we've sung with, we haven't sung with anybody in Antarctica, I know, I know, but we've sung with all of these folks. And each of these folks wasn't just bringing their music and maybe their instrument that we'd never seen before, we didn't know the name of, and maybe their language that we didn't know the words, um, and we were learning how to make new pronunciations, but they were bringing their life perspective, right? That wasn't necessarily our life perspective, and they were sharing that with us. Like they were not just, it was all entangled in the music, right? A lot of times we talk about the food culture, or we talk about the musical culture, or we talk about whatever, but what it really was, was I see you, and you see me, and now we know something more about, you know, the ways in which we're the same and different. And um, it was always such an incredible journey. Um, and then now, Issa, to swing it back to you, you just mentioned um, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around, uh, which is one of the favorite ones we love to sing with you. Do you feel like you'd give us a few verses of that amazing powerhouse of a song? Okay, here we go. Ain't gonna let nobody, Lord, turn me around. Well, now I turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody, Lord, turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom. Oh, ain't gonna let nobody, Lord, Put me down, don't let them. Put me down, don't let them. Put me down, ain't gonna let nobody, Lord. Put me down, I'm gonna keep on the walking, keep on the talking, marching up to freedom. Oh, ain't gonna let nobody, Lord. Stop my vote. Well, stop my vote. Well, stop my vote. Ain't gonna let nobody, Lord. Stop my vote. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom. Oh, ain't gonna let nobody, Lord. Do me wrong. Don't let them. Do me wrong. Don't let them. Do me wrong. Ain't gonna let nobody, Lord. Do me wrong, I'm gonna keep on the walking, keep on the talking, marching up to freedom. Oh, ain't gonna let nobody, Lord, steal my hope. Don't you steal my hope? 
don't you steal my hope ain't gonna let nobody know that steal my hope i'm gonna keep on walking keep on talking marching up to freedom lord have mercy ain't gonna let nobody will turn me around don't let them Turn me around, gonna let them turn me around, ain't gonna let nobody load it. Turn me around, I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, keep on a marching, keep on a fighting, keep on a winning, keep on a going, marching up to freedom. Let <laughs> Woo. Dr. B, thank you hey. so much. You're yeah. welcome. He said, I love singing with you. So, you know, I'm thinking of uh, very early on in this when we started um, and you sang with us one day and I got a note from actually from Susan G, the magical quilt maker um, in Ohio, who said, um, I just sang a duet with Issei Barnwell because of course we were all singing duets with you, right? Everybody's muted, but everybody's singing a duet with you. It was one of the original right. magics of the, and <laughs> we missed singing harmonies, but yet we could make one little harmony from ourselves and our song leader. And that was a magical, magical piece of it all. Um, yes. Thank you, Dr. B. That was really special. Okay, um, welcome. Um, so uh, I would love to um, just very ask, ask hubby to unmute because hubby's over there pretending that he's naturally quiet and we know that's totally not true. <laughs> <laughs> hubby. Um, so actually hubby Jenkins, so formal, former Carolina chocolate drops, um, hubby actually came into the Daily Antidote through the Library of Congress American Folklife Center's Archive Challenge Weeks, where we were um, having folks come and share a song from the archive and uh, generally their own interpretation, some unique uh, take on whatever the song is that they found in the archive. So Issei was talking about music as a way of sort of collecting the story or collecting the history. And um, when hubby's in the room now, both for the Archive Challenge, but even at forever, it we shift from being uh, maybe like um, a force of uh, change to being uh, ethnomusicology history archive nerds um, and going through all of the amazing things you can learn about culture through music by going back. And um, hubby, can you tell us a little bit about sort of, yeah, what you're thinking about today about music? Oh, what I'm thinking about today about music and no, I mean, I would say that I remember that first time and when the first time I saw all the hellos, I was like, this lady's crazy. She's about to say hello to everybody in this room right now. This is not gonna happen. I thought you were gonna stop at any second, but you were just, I was like, this is a beautiful, and then when you did the goodbyes, I was floored. You know, I stuck <laughs> around for the whole thing. Um, that's the other thing to talk about, I, and I'll be swift, but like during the shutdowns, I did a bunch of concerts and online things. I did some where everyone was in a Facebook Live and I was just in Zoom. So I'd finish and there'd just be dead silence. I'd have been the faces to wave or smile at me. So, it was, you know, it's just that connection of being like, oh, there's a bunch of people singing along just as much as you get to do a duet with so-and-so, you know, it's like, I get to have that feeling too of being in front yeah. of people. And yeah. Her performance is making a community, being with the community for a length of song or show. Uh, so yeah, so Javi, I'm sorry, that's so beautiful because that is one of the things that our artists said continuously across the board is they came in this room and then they would ask to come back and they would say like, there's this feedback loop that I'm missing because I'm not getting it in concert and I'm not getting it in my public performances virtually, but it's happening in this space, right? So that was one of the magical, magical things about it. And so the question I have for you is when you first heard the crazy lady doing the hellos, did you ever imagine for a moment that you were gonna become one of the crazy folks doing the hellos? <laughs> I did not, I did not, I will be honest, I didn't. When you asked me, I think the first time you asked me, I was just like, no, no, I can't do that, no. Um, but it's fun and like getting to recognize people, remember people and I don't know. Yeah, you made a community, that's it, period. And I guess the other thing I would say to what you were you saying about, um, yeah, I do, I always tell people that, it's like, what do you do? It's like, I play old time American music and talk about black people, that's what I do. And that talk about black people spans a lot of time. And for me, you know, the room can become ethnomusicological, but it's still relevant to today as far as I'm concerned. And 
you know, of, of what the doctor was talking about, of like these songs of what we put into them, the strife we have to put into it and our feelings of oppression, blah, blah, blah. We've been doing that since day one, you know? And so when I play uh, like a Georgia Sea Island song and we go, we, we invoke the first black churches, our first slave churches that are happening out into, in the woods where they can be private, where they can be alone. It's the first time that they're able to put their feelings, their morality, their uh, fight against oppression, everything into these songs, it's happening from back then um, and still can connect to today in a lot of ways. So it's old timey, but you know, the shit keeps happening over and over again. So it just gets brand new again. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's awesome because one of the things that somebody said, uh, I think it was on our, when we were having our, our second birthday was, um, you know, when I wrote this song, it was for a particular thing that was happening and um, I kind of didn't really want to have to be singing it 10 years later for the same stuff happening, right? Like, so the idea that these songs can keep coming back up again in some ways is wonderful because there's this, you know, this stuff that can boost us. And on the other hand, like, you know, really, we're still dealing with some of these same things. And, um, and of course we are, right? This is, this is what probably we are looking at as a nation, community, globe, right? Because here we are. And it's 2022 and we're singing songs about a war in Ukraine, right? And yeah. how is it even possible that this is what we're singing about and that's what we're singing about? And so- um, I think part of that too is education. That's why it's my, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff. I'm a black person, grew up in America. I didn't know the banjo was a black instrument until I was in my twenties. I didn't know, you know, that we created the music. I didn't know black people were in government right after slavery. And there's a lot of things that I had to learn because it wasn't taught to me. And like also being, you know, then when I got into old time music, not to mini rant, but when I got into old time music, I was in a lot of white spaces, a lot of old white dudes who were just like, we're going to play Run Johnny Run. And like, you know, it becomes a year later, I'm like, oh, that's based on a slave song called Run N Word Run, which was co-opted to be a racist song, which is, you know, oh, we can make it okay if we just change it to Johnny. That's stuff I had to learn, you know, uh, by going into these spaces and feeling these things. So it's just like I can, I just find joy in my empowerment through taking old songs and be like, hey, this is what this song's really about. It makes the song better. It makes us better people by knowing that history and it puts a lens on us when we can look at things uh, around. So, you know, that becomes a big part, I think, of all my performances and definitely like Daily Antidote. It's like, anytime I'm in there, I'm going to learn something. It's going to change how I view something. It's going to change how I, uh, you know, even if it just humanizes someone I haven't thought, you know, I haven't thought about people in Antarctica in, in like a mad long, but now I'm thinking about them and I hope they're okay, you know? <laughs> that's, so. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank, yeah, thank you, Hubby. So that's also um, one of the things we talk about a lot is the idea that um, we're changed when we come into the space. And um, for a long time, I saw that as a thing going this way, right? Like people are coming in the room and they're singing and they go out and they feel more hopeful or they feel more, um, but it, it took me a while to figure out like I could come in the room also in a state of mind that was different than the state I would leave, right? So I could be having a down day and I would come in and all these faces would be coming in and they would be smiling because maybe they're not having a down day and that would just make me go woo, like up. And so sometimes I would come in the room and leave a whole different person, right? And so that is actually, that's friendship, right? That's what you do with your friends, right? You do a back and forth and you do this. So here we are again, we haven't met a lot of us, most of us, and we're we're giving and taking from each other in this way that is like extraordinary and um, meaningful and and yeah, at the deepest kind of sharing in some ways. So yeah, hubby, I agree with you. You know, you learn something every time you come in the room and uh, sometimes it's just how to get through the rest of your day. That's what you learned when you came yeah, in the room. Sure. So you mentioned the Georgia Sea Island singers um, or this, you know, the community. What is what did you bring us anything that comes from Georgia Sea Island today? Yeah, I think I was going to do Adam Pin and Lee's, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it to a different song. I think I'm going to do the Daniel song instead. OK. Um, but yeah, uh, in the Georgia Sea Islands, they sing in a style called Ring Shouts. Um, and it involves uh, using your hands and your body for percussion. Um, traditionally, there's someone known as a stick man, like a stick person, who will pound out a rhythm that sounds something like, uh, and people can kind of clap and move around that. Uh, and the singing involves a lot of call and response. Um, and people believe this is what a lot of early like slave churches uh, might have sounded like. And it was preserved for a bunch of reasons, um, including geographical isolation, autonomy after the Civil War, yada yada. Um, 
brief autonomy. Um, and so I'll, I'll do this song. It's called Daniel. And the story of this song is uh, the enslaved people were having a, a gathering of some sort. And to decide, Daniel's like, we need some meat for this party. I'm going to go steal some meat from uh, Mr. Slave Master. And he runs and goes to steal the meat. But the Slave Master and all these people come out. So all the people start singing this song, Daniel, and they're singing it as if it's a gospel song, but they're really telling Daniel to hide and run because he, because he doesn't, they don't want him to get caught. So the lines are, move Daniel, move Daniel, run Daniel, run Daniel. And it's a way of being able to sing about what we want, sing about how we feel without, uh, you know, anybody else knowing about it. Music for us, by us, FUBU. So I'm gonna sing it and you can join along at home. You can always just clap. But I'm going to sing a long line. I'll say, move, Daniel, move. And you have one word, and it's Daniel. Move, Daniel, move, Daniel. Move, Daniel, move, Daniel. Move, Daniel, move, Daniel. Move, Daniel, move, Daniel. And there's going to be a little bit of a break, and then we're going to move back into the Daniels. Don't fight it. We're going to feel it. If you don't know by the beginning, you'll know by the end. Here we go. Move Daniel, 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 shout 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 Daniel, move Daniel, move, move Daniel, move Daniel, move Daniel, move Daniel, move Daniel, move Daniel, oh. Oh Lord, these sinners gone to hell. Move Daniel, 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 move Daniel. Go the other way, Daniel. Go the other way, Daniel. Go the other way. Go the other way, Daniel. Run, Daniel, run, Daniel. Run, Daniel, run, Daniel. Run, Daniel, run, Daniel. Run, Daniel, run. Move Daniel, move. Move Daniel, move Daniel. Move Daniel, move. Move Daniel, move Daniel. Oh Lord, pray sinner come. Oh Lord, these sinners gone to hell. Move Daniel, move Daniel, move Daniel, move Daniel, move Daniel, move, move Daniel, move Daniel. Go the other way, Daniel. Go the other way, Daniel. Go the other way. Go the other way, Daniel. Sit in your way. Sit in your way, Daniel. Sit in your way, Daniel. Move in your way, Daniel. Move Daniel, move. Move Daniel, move Daniel. Great job, Woo! everybody. Great job. You know what, hubby? <laughs> he wasn't stealing. That was owed to him. All that work that he put in, that food was owed to him. He was just getting right. it. Back. You're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you and for so coming. That's what I'm talking about. And so it is. <laughs> Take so thank you, hubby. That was amazing. Like, so yeah, talk about another level of this, right? Music as communication. So if you want to tie it back into the daily antidote, like the ways that we are communicating without talking, right? Because most of the folks in this room don't actually talk. And so we're singing a song together and it's the way we're communicating. And we're not communicating necessarily that we need to run, but in another way, sometimes we are, right? So the powerhouse songs like that Arne brings us about time is now, change is now, right? We're communicating with each other. We're singing, you know, hey, everybody, you know, get your get yourself strong, get yourselves ready and let's move. So hubby, thank you. That was amazing. Um, and uh, so, all right, I'm wondering, Arne. Yeah, Can I say something, Joe. Yeah. Uh, the name, the daily antidote. I'm just so curious where that came from for you. So, you know, we batted around a bunch of different names and um, the notion, so Busy Graham was in on this, Busy, myself, Greg Lewis from Washington Rebels, we, um, we talked about, you know, so what is this really? And it was a place to sing because we wanted to be able to sing. We were going to miss singing. We were going to need to sing, right? But we thought, oh, we'll, we'll need like, you know, it can be an antidote to the things that we are, you know, that are struggling with right now. They're struggling with the pandemic. This will be an antidote. We had no idea when we said that word, how many layers of antidote. It's so, it's so layered. First off, for me, just the name is so vitally important. When you break it down, the daily, that's every day. It's consistency, it's safety, it's instilled security. It, it, it builds self-confidence, you know, in just your life skills. Cause we were at that place 
when it, like what is going on there was so much fear loss panic and you know on the real for me i was struggling with basic things like what day is it like what what is today and you know is what's up what's down you know is it safe to go out in my backyard you know um and so i had to consciously make my life plans based on the day so on mondays i do this on tuesdays i do this and so just the name daily was such a comfort for me because you know i knew that it was once i found out about it it was a place that i could go to and so it's been 700 plus days now that you the consistency has always been there and then the antidote um, suggest medicine, a cure, a remedy for what is ailing us. And again, this program was up and running full fledged before the vaccine. So that's another layer to it. Like, you know, yeah. just how invaluable it was, it is, and will continue to be moving forward. I'm just really grateful to be part of such a beautiful an active community. I mean, you all these incredible projects that people can do together. It's so engaging. It's so giving. Uh, it's quite healing. Um, would you say one once one day at a time, one song at a time? Yeah, one song I'm, at a time. Yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna come up with a theme song for that. But <laughs> I I need to you know to thank you because it was a place to come to where some normalcy was going to happen, and I could see people, even if I couldn't talk to them, I could still see them. That's beautiful, Arne. Thank you. I love that. I like. I love also like the notion that you know antidote you know overlaps with vaccine, but antidote also can just mean basic soothing, right? Like it's an antidote to what we need, right? It's it's that mo that place where you come where you can sort of level back out again, and you know what difference did it make what day it was, right? We all had all these new ways we needed to learn to live, and here was this thing. And it was soothing and it was there and it was two things we really needed was to be soothed and to be there or the here that we are right and yeah thank you arne so 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 well put um so let me see i think um dr b and and hubby and arne um can i throw out to you just to chat a little bit more the three of you i'd love to just back out and the three of you talk a little bit more about your your ways of thinking about community and the power of community and music. And um, and Dr. B, if you're still here. So Arne, I'm kicking it to you. You can you can be your usual host. <laughs> Open up, hubby. Come on, get up in here. Don't be shy. I remember, like, I remember when I was a kid, my mom, I grew up with two moms when my mom's is Puerto Rican and like independista. And like, she started writing poetry when I was like in high school and she would drag me to New York and Poets Cafe. Oh, dude, I love that. That was and my- like, there was a woman there, her name was Mariposa, which means butterfly in Spanish. And I don't remember the whole poem, but she had this poem where she said something like, uh, it was like a bunch of things, like as a woman, I'm blah, blah, blah. As a Puerto Rican, I'm blah, blah, blah. And there was one line she goes, but as an artist, I'm a public servant. Like that was like her mm. whole line in the poem. And like 14 year old hubby thought that's that's genius you know um but something i just carried on with me you know to talk about feeling the responsibility of playing music especially like being black in an america and feeling like when i started playing this music like oh i have a responsibility i have a responsibility to like share and to bring this knowledge and to you know uh be that person in the room at all times you know and also you know like we could start with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, but you know, Freddie Gray, we can go back to uh, when I was a kid, what was his name? Am Amadou Diallo when I was a little yeah. kid. Yo, you know, like, Eleanor so forth. Right, and just making sure like, I just never want my shows or my performances to be a space where people can go and not think about it or forget about it. Or, you know what I mean? You know, like, I don't want to have that, you know, Oh, I went to a hubby show and it was just so nice. He didn't get all angry or get about anything or blah, blah, blah. I just can't, you know, I can't ever do that. You know, one of my favorite protesting things was the, you know, BLM brunch, you know, just making sure like, no, not here either. You know, you got to think about it here. You know, homeboy playing football. He said, not at my football games. I'm a Neil, so you have to think about it here. I don't know if that goes so much aligned with community, but it's more of just like what is important about 
music and having spaces where I'm just like, I'm gonna share what I'm about, you know? You know, for, so. am I on? Yes, hi, please. hi, hi. You're here. Okay. You know, um, for a number of years before everything shut down, um, once a month, I conducted a community sing here in Washington, DC. And we would have over a hundred people very often, all packed in a room. And I just give out parts and we'd have four parts, five parts, and some people would bring instruments and things like that. And it was, it was an amazing time because people who had never sung before, you know, were singing with other people. And it didn't matter whether you got it right or not. What mattered was that you were part of the group and you shared the sentiment, you understood where the song came from and you understood the passion that went into it. If you yourself ever found yourself in a, in a jail cell and there were other people around, you had a song that you could share with them so that there would not be silence in that, in that jail. There would be a community in that jail. And that is uh, the power of song. And I, I, I was born in 1946. So I was around in the 60s when, when people actually started singing publicly with each other. And, um, and it was an amazing thing. I grew up in, in Harlem and then in Jamaica, Queens. And you know, on weekends, I would go into, into New York City, into Manhattan you know, and see what was going on. And that would be like, you know, 11 or 12 in the morning and I wouldn't get home until seven and eight. And my parents would be saying, well, where were you today? What did you do today? You know, <laughs> like, what is my child doing? But what I, what was happening was I was trying to find, you know, a, a, a community that I felt like I could fit into. Mm -hmm. And um, And then what I began to realize was what I was looking for actually existed for quite a long time in the black church. Mm. And you know, that a lot of the songs that were being sung where the words were being contemporized mm. had come out of the black church. So it was not a unique experience. It was just a sharing with a broader, more varied community that I had experienced before. And that was an amazing thing. It was a very amazing thing. Mm. I want to add to that. Uh, I don't know if, if I'm telling the truth, so help me out, Dr. B. Having an unauditioned community group, mm -hmm. was that you that started the unaudition part? Because that's mm -hmm. really, really important. Oh, it's important. It's important <laughs> because people will tell you, oh, I don't sing. I'm like, well, why not? You should sing, you know? And I was um, part of Sweet Honey at the time, but we would do some rehearsing at the Levine School of Music and they gave us a space that we could just be in. And after a while, you know, people would start looking in and we'd say, well, come on in, you know. And then once a month, anybody who wanted to come and sing would sing and we would rotate who would lead each month so that there were always different songs, different styles, different attitudes um, being shared with diverse people from the community. And that was an amazing thing. And what, you know, what was confirmed for me or affirmed for me is that everybody needs to sing, you know? And if you can, if you can get together with people and, and get them to understand that there's no judgment, people will sing people will sing so you know if there's anybody out there who wants to sing just you know pick up the phone and call somebody and say do you know twinkle twinkle little star can we sing that together you know because eventually it grows and it's very therapeutic it really really is so and two, like, people um, may need you out in the street people may need you one day you know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What do you mean? Might need you. People in the street might need you to what? I mean, if you, you know, if there's an issue, you know, and someone says, we, you know, we got to, we got to take this over. We got to deal with this. 
Oh, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point, you know, they were out there, people are out there, and it's like, you don't have the same kind of shyness, or I don't belong, or anything, you might find yourself running out the house, just to be part of it. Mm-hmm. And you need you a song. Huh? And, and you need a song. You need song. Exactly. 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 I'll say another thing, too, of, like, no judgment, but, it, it, like, I remember I did one rally, uh, we marched from, like, downtown Brooklyn, all the way to Trump Tower, Yep. And they had some songs, you know, all the good chants, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then like around Washington Square Park, I got tired. And I like sat down. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way to Trump Towers. I'm, I'm old now. I'm old man. I can't do all this walking. And, and this man came by and he had this giant speaker and he was just blasting James Brown. And it was just, it wasn't like I'm black and I'm proud. It was just like, it could have been Sex Machine. It didn't matter. It was just like the song was there. People were dancing. People were singing. And all of a sudden I just felt myself... And I just traveled with that man all the way up to all the way up there. It didn't matter what song it was. People knew it. We sang a couple like rap songs came on that I know, but the energy of people singing and being with it powered me all the way to Trump Tower to tell this guy to go. Well, we're not. I'm sorry. I mentioned him too many times. That's the last time I'll mention him for the rest of this thing. But just not that there's no judgment, but it's also just it doesn't matter what the song is to bring people together behind, uh, you know, just right. 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 I have there a, is a common point. There yeah. is a common point that we can find. And very often, it's a song that we all grew up with. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I have adopted that same model uh, set forth by you, Dr. B, and Sweet Honey with In Process. Remember right. In Process? Back in the day, we'd meet on Thursday evenings up at the church in Northwest, I think it was Arkansas Avenue. Mm-hmm. And we'd be in a room, you'd put um, chairs in a circle, and then one of the sweet honeys would be there. Um, I have modeled my same choir uh, gatherings just like that in a church, uh, in an extra space, ser- seats in a circle, unauditioned, just walk in the door. And it's just amazing to hear stories from people who have trauma around singing in public. Oh, yeah. Trauma from as a kid, you know, maybe somebody told them you're singing too loud, you're singing too soft, you're singing, you're too this, too that, or whatever. And their joy of singing just diminished. And you bring them into a space and, you know, sing something like sing to the power, which you taught me. All right. And then, they, you know, they're up on their feet and moving around. They energize and they can walk. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, what is you, 22? Come on now. He old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 22. Oh my goodness. You know what? I'm just going to take it. Yeah, I'm 22. Fuck it. Okay. Uh, you, you, you were just born last week. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we don't crack, so don't worry about it. You know, That's I can right. ask you if you're 22. And so, so it is. And so it is. Um, but yeah, that just that people come in a room and and often at that church you would find folks who would be in meetings and they you know as they're leaving they're hearing all the singing and so they they hear they come walk in the room i'm like come on it we, we just make the circle wider mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, go in. and uh actually um in a couple of weeks we our very first in-person protest as part of the poor people's campaign rally that's going to be happening here in Los Angeles. And so we're gathering people. We'll be singing mass, but um, we're learning songs um, from the Poor People's Campaign. A lot of songs that I learned from Sweet Sunny, Sweet Honey, and then some songs that I have written myself. So we we, we fit and hit the streets again. It's on. Thank you, Arne and Hubby and Ise. That is just so much fun to sit and be a fly on the wall and let you guys talk. And um, I wish that we could keep going and going and going because um, yeah, there's so much still left to say in the universe. But I, um, I'm i thinking a couple of things. One is that it would be fun to have a closing song. And I think Arne, you had something about change that sounded like it was gonna be good. And um, also we talked about the quilt a couple of times and um, so I think actually I'm going to do that now and then we'll have a closing song. So the quilt um, is something that was made by someone in the room um, as a gift for me, actually, on the occasion of the second birthday. And um, it's it's a quilt and um, it really sums up the daily antidote, like both literally, literally and figuratively. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do a little screen share now, show this to you guys if I can uh, figure out how to do it. And then, um, yeah, I hope that you enjoy it. It really is a way of um, 
seeing what community can do. So here we go. I hope. Friends oh. only love wow. can bring peace so that I thrive with all my toes till the day breaks dawn still let us thrive with all my toes till the day breaks dawn Wow. Wow. Yeah. That was Susan G from Ohio and Dr. B. She was at the concert in Ohio that honored you. And she sent me the program with you looking all sweet and precious on it. She was. Yeah. And actually, we uh, the Daily Antidote um, uh, pulled together to put an ad in the program thanking Issei for all of her not just participation in the Daily Antidote, but all that she's done for all of us musically over such a long time. And um, but the quilt, right? It really symbolizes a lot of what we've been talking about in here, right? Things that music can create. Um, the idea that we're all a community. That's like a square of all the different things that we did, right? And kind of like our little Zoom squares, it just brings us all together. It brings this all together. It makes something tangible out of something that is what? I don't know. You know, in some in some ways we are tangible. We've hugged in real life, some of us now, right? So it's just this amazing, never-ending square circle <laughs> and um i'm so so grateful to all of the folks in this room i mean actually a huge bunch of thanks going out to cdss um for all the ways they've supported the daily and for this amazing opportunity in common time to be able to get together and have these kinds of conversations um to rna batson and to hubby jenkins and to isay barnwell for coming together and um chatting with us in here um to all of the folks who come to the daily every day um, we get, you know, anywhere between like 100 to 200, 300 people a day between people watching on Facebook Live and people in that room. That's a lot of people every day, right, being touched by this music. And uh, and some days much more than that. It's really, it's so amazing. Um, I want to thank Anna Alter, who's in the room, assistant to the Daily Antidote of Song, without whom, who, who only knows, <laughs> without whom everything. Um, I want to thank um, all our donors and the staff at Carpe Diem. And just all of the people who come in to make this what it is, all our artists um, and anybody I'm forgetting, thank you. Um, and I want to throw out there before we part company um, that Arne um, has a great change song. Hubby, I don't know if you want to sing or say a little something else. And Issa, I don't know if you want to sing or say a little something else to sort of lead us out of the room. But I want to turn it over to uh, each of you to close out as you would like. I'll be quick. We're just going to do one verse and one course of the time is now. Uh, and let's just get right into it. Ten seconds. So we have a video. This is our first project. This is the one, response one, to George two, Floyd. Eight, two, you know we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and waiting for change. Come, but change never comes. Now we're tired of waiting and waiting and waiting. Tired of waiting and waiting and waiting. Tired of waiting and waiting. 
waiting for change to come. And we ain't gonna wait no, no more. The time is now, now, now. The time is now, now, now. The time is now. Now is the time for change to come. Change oh, the time is now. Now, now. The time is now. Now, now. The time is now. Now is the time for change to come. Change must come. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Well, now we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. There are a lot of different parts and people can make up their parts. There's only those few words. We're the ones we've been waiting for. So I'm going to sing it three more times. Okay, here we go. We are the ones we've been waiting for. 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 Yeah. Woo! Yeah! Ise Barnwell, I don't even know how to come in after you ever because you you give me that beautiful big deep voice and then I come in with this ridiculous little voice saying things. Don't worry about it. Every little voice counts. Every little voice counts. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> I know I've told this story before, but one of the times when I was in the room with Ise um, and we were doing something back and forth and I said something about a high note and she leaned in really close to her little Zoom box and said, I don't have any high notes. <laughs> <laughs> and she cracked me up. Ise Barnwell, thank you so much. We are the ones we've been waiting for. I mean, that's just so in in line with the, what we keep saying, right? This is on us, gang. It's about us. It's 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 us. We we have right. to do it. And um it's so Bennett Bernie's Johnson Regan with that one. Beautiful. Thank right. you, Ise. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Dr. B, I was singing the bass. We are the ones. Ones. We are the ones we've been waiting. I was All right. <laughs> Thank and you so much. No, she does have penthouse notes. Trust. <laughs> Dr. B is in the penthouse and she is in the subway. She gets All right, she we're going to find it, Ise Barnwell. We're going to have you singing in the, in the penthouse notes in this room at some point. All right, Arne Batson again, thank you so much. Ise Barnwell, thank you so much. Hubby Jenkins, do you want to unmute and say anything or or... I'm just so happy I got to hang out with everybody here and talk to you all and um, I don't want to sing nothing because we that that's the sentiment there. So I think thank you for blessing us with all the good music and everything. And yeah, and congrats on two years, third one on its way to many more. Thank uh, you, yeah. hubby. Peace, thank you so much. Looking so much forward to spending a lot more time with you, all three of you, Issei, hubby, and Arne, in the year ahead. And uh, thanks everybody in this room. Thanks, Joanna Reiner Wilkinson for uh, thinking of doing this. Uh, it's been really great to spend this time with you and CDSS. Um, thank you, CDSS Commons. So um, in our universe, in the Daily Antidote of Song, we do, in fact, also say, as Hubby pointed out, the goodbyes. So roll them. Arne, you want to be on it or you want me to do it? You do some, I'll do some. All right. Here we go. Ready? I'll say goodbye to you. You can say goodbye to me. I'll skip me. Arne Batson, thank you so much for being here today. And Hubby Jenkins, thank you so much. Glad to have you with us. You guys are amazing. And I love you.
Joanne, thank you so much for the opportunity. Ise Barnwell, thank you for being in the house with us. Always amazing to have you here. Arne, I mean, Arlene in California, thank you so much. And Jane, great to see you. Hugs and love. And Deborah, thank you for being here. Mommy, love you, mommy. Thanks for being here today. Kevin, thank you so much for being here. It's so nice to have you in this room. And to the folks over there at Pinewoods Camp, that's Chris Jacobs and Anna Alter. Really glad you guys are here today. Sheila in Florida, thank you so much. Kathy in upstate New York. And I'm going to spin it on over to the woman who's probably going to sing you out instead of Jesse Ammer. Are those those curly tops? Willard and Al all these three curly tops, curly tops. Uh-huh. Bye, bye, bye to Brooke Friendly. See you later. Martha in Oregon. That's an interesting way to spell Oregon. Kathy in Virginia and Cricket. I saw you dancing. And Carolyn at the, hey, Carolyn, I see you. Bob and the bear. Nancy and the moo cow. We saw the cow immortalized on the quilt. I love it. Carol J in Connecticut. Susan in, in Seattle. Baba James Harkless, who is tomorrow. Yay, Baba James. I can't wait to see you and spend time with you tomorrow. Annette Perone. Uh-huh. Okay, y'all are moving fast. There's Don, the other girly top. And Diane and Sandy E in North Carolina. And James Clement. I see you. Ralph in Victoria. Kathy in Gainesville. Cliff in Vermont. Isabel in Gainesville. It's two Gainesville people. Celia in Easton. David and Annette Petrich. And I think that's everybody. And bye-bye, Jojo. See you later, alligator.